Hey there, welcome back to Bernama Today, the 31st of October 2019 edition. I'm Nadia Abdul Latif and today we've got a very interesting segment here talking about the fear element and the lack of Malaysians actually participating in the Malaysian stock market, mainly due to fear. So today I have with me the CEO of Beyond Insight, Mr. Terence To, together with the Director and Chief Trainer of Beyond Insights, Ms. Catherine To, to be talking a little bit more about this. Thank you so much for joining us on set. Yeah, Thank Welcome. you, Nadia. Thank you. So yeah. we talk about the stock market and very often there is this dichotomy of people who are saying, okay, go for it. It's a good way not only to seek financial stability but also to grow your wealth, okay. as well as there would be a group of individuals who say, really, it's not for me, there's too many variables, mm -hmm. too many things to worry about, is this something that I should be going into? So for a little bit of a one-on-one on okay. what the stock market in Malaysia entails, could you explain a little bit more about, is the stock market really for everyone? Okay. Well, um, a as you rightly said, there's a lot of fear in the general public about investing in the stock market. And there was this famous quote by Warren Buffett, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he said, risk comes from not knowing what you are doing and yeah. this is the gist of it um, a lot of people have fear about the stock market because they do not know how to approach it uh, they may be thinking that it, it, it's too technical i need to have financial knowledge to be yeah. successful in it and well th there is some truth in it uh, in a sense that uh, as again as warren buffett said uh, if you don't know what you're doing, then you're taking a lot of risk. Yeah. But if you know what to do, then the knowledge will take the risk away. So uh, we believe that you know a anyone can learn, who, who has the willingness to learn, mm -hmm. has the ability, uh, is ready to learn how to do it successfully, can do it. Right? So it's just a question of uh, learning it. Right. Okay, so Kathleen, as a chief trainer for mm -hmm. for something like this, how do you then reduce that risk? Because you rightly pointed out, and you quoted Warren Buffett, yeah. that we have to be looking at ways to reduce risk through knowledge, yeah. through understanding what it is that we're getting ourselves into. Yes. So, what sort of, how do we get on board? Is yeah. it, do I just take an open online course? Do I speak okay. to people? W what are some of the tips? Yeah. Uh, of course, we have a proper course, uh, which is a system, I call it systematic approach to investing and trading. Okay. Uh, where we teach people, you know, uh, systematically from how to select the best stocks, mm -hmm. right? Those uh, stocks that are already making money, they have a strong growth as well. And then from there, we need to learn how to time it, okay. when to get in and when to get out. Uh, but even the best stock, you look at everything looks right, right? Yeah. You still need uh, to be prepared to be wrong. So we have a very stringent uh, risk management approach. For example, we never risk more than 1% if we are wrong of the capital, right? So by doing a, a location, for example, in a basket of, uh, we divide by a basket of 10 stocks when we are investing, mm -hmm. right? And we do not allow if any of the stocks goes wrong, the impact will only be 1% of our capital. Okay. Yeah. So, but a lot of people do not, um, have a proper risk management. That's why they perceive to be, uh, many people perceive uh, trading to be, uh, or investing to be risk risky. Well, I can understand that. I mean, for yeah. the average uh, Malaysian, and mm -hmm. if you don't really have, you know, that coffers and that backup, if yeah. things go wrong, even if it's just 1% of my yeah. 10 stocks, yeah. I can imagine the panic. I mean, yeah. a lot of people are investing yeah. their life savings. Yeah. I've also heard things like the master trader boot okay. camp. So uh -huh. could you explain a little bit more about what that oh, is? Yeah. So one of the, uh, we have a five days uh, boot camp mm -hmm. focusing on trading psychology, okay. which I think is the most missing element uh, in the market. Uh, and we are the only one in Asia that conducts that, mainly because after trading for 26 years, I myself go through a lot of emotional uh, uh, up and down. It's an emotional investment, isn't it? I mean, yes, to, to yes. see your money go up and down, yes, that's and suddenly because, that day goes whoop. Like, <gasps> yes, that's because when I started, uh, this is how I started in 1992. I joined my first job in AMD Penang. Mm -hmm. And my colleagues has been, you know, talk during the lunchtime, like to talk about the uh, stock market in okay. uh, KLSC. Okay. And that's how I, how I get started. But I don't come from a rich family. So it took me one whole year to save up my first 2,000 ringgit because oh. at that time, one lot is uh, 1,000 units. Yeah. Okay. So from then, I started. Uh, but it didn't take me too long to learn the lessons in 1997 yeah. financial crisis uh, where, you know, Malaysia stock market gone down between 50 to 70 percent. And so I can understand why people think that uh, trading is risky. Then later, I realized, unfortunately, I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. When I attend proper course in the end, I realized that there is a way to manage the risk. It's mm -hmm. just that I, I was just looking for my colleagues' tips to buy, and that's the wrong way. But if you look at it, probably 90% of the people out there are doing it that way. 
Yeah. Right. Not many people you know, go through a proper curriculum yes. on how to invest properly and how to allocate their portfolio equity. Yeah. So, so that's the main problem. Yeah. Terence, I wanted to ask you a little yeah. bit more. I mean, yeah. in the current Malaysian population, you're talking about a significant portion of us who are actually yeah. belier, youth, so to speak, right? Yeah. Although we yeah. do have people who are more seasoned investors. Mm -hmm. How do we get those that are sort of starting up in their work, or at least even perhaps uh, past 18-year-olds, to be looking at how to smartly invest? Because one of the key things that I've seen is we don't really have a healthy... Uh, savings for the future oh, okay. kind of culture in Malaysia right. and this definitely is one way of looking at it with risk of course but how do we get on board what are some of the things that we should be looking at um, again I think it's about educating mm. them as well because yeah. um, I, I you know uh, you you probably agree with me uh, uh, a lot of the younger generation now they are very short-term in their thinking because yeah. a, a lot of things has been provided uh, for. for them, right? <laughs> yes, uh, yes. I mean, yeah. as as parents, we want to do our best to provide the best for our children. But sometimes, you know, they kind of put them in a situation where they don't have to think so long term. But yeah. mm -hmm. when it comes to investing, when it comes to finances, you have to think long term. Okay. Um, because, like, even if you could, um, let's say, get a twenty percent return a year on mm -hmm. an investment, right? Um, and you start with about five thousand. Um, if to get to a one million uh, portfolio, right, by starting with five thousand, getting twenty percent return every year, mm -hmm. which is pretty good, twenty percent return a year, and it will still take you about thirty years to reach one million. So you have to start really, really early, mm -hmm. and you have to start planning. You know, saving us, savings up, not spending uh, excessively on on items that you don't need. Oh, that's um, gonna be tough. Yeah. <laughs> So th yes. that's only Lots the first step. Lots of things that we want right, to get Right, savings at. and then move on to investing. And yeah. then when you want to uh, invest, you got to make sure that you are ready, right? You already have that knowledge uh, to, to approach it and uh, not wait until uh, you have the money. Yes. Um, because when you have the money, then there's still a learning curve that you have to mm. go through, right? So start early start learning early start planning early i think that's the awareness that we have i'm going to be a little bit critical here because very often we talk about starting them young right and yeah. i've also yeah. seen a lot of social enterprises that are starting teaching financial literacy to children as young as five six seven year old okay. and of course you've got those three different things where this is a spend this is a safe this is a share jar okay. yeah. i mean ba basic concepts like that okay. uh, when we talk about education and we're talking about the millennials going to the stock market very often we say they've either started too late or they've learned things off the internet but do you think there should be like you said a standard okay. curriculum that we're putting mm -hmm. in perhaps even to the education system so that children who are past SPM for mm -hmm. example mm -hmm. would know what this means not just because you took the economics paper for okay. your SPM so wh what are your thoughts on that is uh, are there countries that are already doing this perhaps um, not that I'm aware of uh, I do agree that financial literacy should be embedded in our curriculum yeah I think it's very uh, basic things that must be go there there's a lot of yeah. things that you've done, you've learned on the go while you were yeah. at work, isn't it? Mm, it wasn't yes. it wasn't really thought through a standardized curriculum. Yeah. Our our education system is designed to um, produce professionals yeah. like doctors, lawyers, yes. engineers. It's not designed for even entrepreneurs, yeah. Yeah. And also uh, people who are more financially savvy. Because I think everyone needs to learn about financial literacy. Yeah. yeah. So Terence, I wanted to find out a lot of people are reading stuff off the net yeah. about how to invest, when to invest, what to invest, how credible uh, are the kind of things that you, you know, when you go to Dr. Google, I'm guessing you've got a hit and miss ratio, right? Yes. Yeah. So what are your thoughts? Well, um, it, some of the information may be credible, they may not be credi uh, credible, um, but I think the, 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 the risk about learning things randomly mm -hmm. off the internet is you get random results because yes. you, you don't know what is the context around the content that you're reading. Mm. Context meaning, you know, when, when people say that, you know, this stock is a good stock, right? Um, do you know what is uh, this person's risk uh, profile that is recommending this stock? Um, when uh, someone say it's a good time to buy, but is it a good time for you? Yes. Then um, does it also review, you know, what what is the risk management strategy behind this decision? You know, how yeah. do you protect yourself if and when the uh, the direction of the stock price doesn't go your way? Yeah. So yeah. So in a nutshell, if you if you if you take knowledge randomly off the internet, you get random results. You know, that's not what you want. 
right? Mm. Um, you know, in business, we always say that in, in order to produce consistent result, you need to systemize things. Mm. And investing or trading is the same as well. Mm. You need to have a proven system that produces results, and you want to use this system uh, in a consistent manner, in a disciplined manner, then you get consistent results, yeah. right? Because um, you know when, when you talk to about a lot of people who invest in stock market, you you usually hear things like when you ask them how you're doing, right? Yeah. They say, yeah, sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. But yeah, so wh why do you want to spend time and effort doing yeah. something that gives you random result that that doesn't make a lot of sense? So uh, having a, a a system, a process that can help you to produce. Uh, consistent result, I think that's very critical and important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, looking at where we were before pre-Asian financial crisis yeah. and where we are right now, do you think the Malaysian risk appetite and the way Malaysians are investing in the stock market? I'm not. I'm not talking about big guns. I'm talking about the average Malaysians. How far do you think we are driven by things like fear and herd mentality? And like you said, everyone's on it, so I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why I'm doing it. It looks like a good thing. And then realize, like what you said, what's good for you might not be good for me. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, there are many uh, investing and trading styles. There's no one size fits all, right? There's a long-term investment. Uh, mid-term, short-term, to the extent of even uh, what we call intraday trading, right? Okay. So you spend about one to two hours trading and you don't keep any positions overnight. Okay. Uh, but many people are not aware of it. But one of the most important misconceptions that um, you know, we need to help people overcome is the need to be right. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of people cannot even uh, afford to even like, lose a single trade. You cannot have that mentality when you come for trading. So zero right. error is going to be disastrous if you're going to go yes. in. It's, it's, it's that more it's like impossible, win, right? We right? yes. need to look at, uh, in a short term trading, we look at 100 trades. Okay. Right? We have a way where in 100 trades, you just need to be one third right to break even. Anything more than one third right, you make money. Okay. Yeah, even 40% right, you can make money. Even 50% right, you can make money. Because when you lose, right, you lose 1%. But when you win, you win 2% for that trade. We need to target trades, what we call with 2 to 1 reward versus the risk. Okay. That's for short-term trading. All right. For long-term investment, right, we look at a basket of stocks. If you have two or three big runners, it can cover some of the weakness in the stock. We should not approach uh, investing as, you know, just uh, individual single stocks. Yeah. So is this also covered in what a trade boot camp would look like? Do you also cover what, what is mid-term investing and what is long-term investing? Could you uh, share? Oh, in fact, that one we actually covered in our free uh, seminar where okay. we educate the public on a monthly basis yeah, because uh, we want to help the public overcome a lot of the myth in investing, mm -hmm. that investing is risky, and uh, also to help people have a financial plan. I see yeah, the yeah. master trading boot camp. So could you explain to me a little bit about what I see on screen here? Oh, this is my it says first in Asia. Yes. Okay. This is my, uh, I would say, our most passionate program. Okay. Uh, it's focused primarily on investing and trading psychology because our education system and our upbringing does not risk help. averse. Yes, it's very <laughs> risk averse. Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't help us in investing and trading, dealing with losses, right? Okay. Uh, the the need to be right, the fear of uh, losing money, uh, high certainty. Right, um, and the need to be impromptu, wanted fast money. So there's a lot of conditioning that need to be overcome if you one person uh, wanted to be a consistent trader. So you have to unlearn those um, yeah. mindsets yeah. that you have and Correct. relearn a new Correct. paradigm. Yeah. Right? So in that five days, uh, it's more like a brainwash. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the brainwash session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the most important part in our day one is we help them to build a strong why. Okay. Right. Why? they must invest and trade co successfully, consistently, take okay. it seriously, not to take it like a hobby. Yeah, because if you don't have a strong why, you will take it lightly because most people are busy, right? They came back from uh, their work, they get tired. Investing or trading may not be the first thing in their mind. Yeah. Yeah. When I was working in Intel, because I have a strong why, yeah, my job was very stressful. I okay. have a long hours. I have 100 over emails. I manage 102 people there. So, but I never uh, missed a trading day. Yeah, in my three years in Intel, I only missed five trading days in three years. You calculated. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, so I invest about one hour a day. Yeah, because my reason is strong enough. Yeah, I want to be financially free because I calculate even with my pay at that time, uh, if I continue work for Intel until I retire, I won't be financially free because of the inflation, right? The yeah. cost of living standards yeah. on the year to year. So because I calculated that and I really want to have more time freedom. So it, it's a must yeah. to me. 
and and I built the interest in trading. I, it didn't come as something that I'm very interested in so from the start. So it's a must learn, right? Yeah. It's something that it's good to have. Yeah, okay. you have to build the interest. Yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned that because mm. this sounds like it's a mixture of. Uh, a need to educate uh, yeah. the public as well as it being a lucrative business. Could you tell me just a little bit about how Beyond Insights came to be? What was what was the clicker? How did you get started? Okay, uh, so I actually started this. I, I sort of get him to join me yes. for that. <laughs> yeah, um, because of my passion. Uh, Beyond Insights doesn't started to with the mission to teach about investment and trading. Okay. Yeah. My uh, mission at the time is to bring out the best in people. I want to teach about personal mastery. Okay. Because I find that uh, mastering our own psychology is very important. Uh, unfortunately, when we first started, I did a lot of previews. Uh, I really share from my heart. But a lot of people say this is not their priority. Right? They want to make money first. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> they want to make money first. Uh, but I do believe uh, mastering themselves is important in to be consistent as a trader. Yeah. So I just switch it around. Most people have challenged to achieve their financial independence. Yeah. So what I do is, why not I teach them how to make money first, since I have okay. been trading for so long. So and in the end, they realize how important is psychology. So that's how we switch so around. Thank you so much for that, yeah. Kathleen. But yeah. I hear you first, it's important to yeah. not always be correct. There yeah. is a need to be impromptu, to be agile, to not be so risk averse if yeah. we are looking at eventually being financially independent and debt free. So thank yeah. you so much for spending time with us. Yeah. This is Beyond Insights talking about how Malaysians lack that gumption to uh, participate yeah. in the stock market because of fear. But we'll be back. Stay tuned.